Hey, fourth grade friends, Ms. Tramel here with day 12 of Number Corner. How are you doing today? Are you ready for today's activities or warm ups, I should call them? Have you been keeping up with me thus far? Well, I challenge you to continue to make the effort to do so because we're so close to finishing September and I really want us to finish September strong. Not only that, but I really feel like we're re reviewing some key strategies and ideas to set us up for success in math this school year. Just like we normally do, we're going to go ahead and start off by looking at our calendar grid marker. And just like I said yesterday, you guys are so good with predictions, I'm not even going to ask what you predict because I'm sure you're going to get it right. So here it is. Isn't it crazy how ancient Egyptian numbers stand for numbers just like our modern numerals stand for? It's quite interesting. So looking at this card, what is the modern numeral? The modern numeral. 200 plus 60 plus 4. I could ask I could ask how you figure that out, but I think I know the answer. Did you do 2 times 100 plus 6 times 10 plus 4 times 1? Or did you do 200 plus 60 plus 4? Much like we did on our very first workbook page. If you did, you got it. So let's go ahead and record 264. All right. So September 24th, and now we have 264. And so far, it does seem like we're just adding 11 each day, which I'm glad it continues to follow the pattern because if the pattern ever changed, then would it really be a pattern? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, calendar collector. We're on day 12. So, yesterday we just completed our second full yard. And you may remember when we first did it, I asked you, do I need more yards? Well, what do you think? Will I? Today's day 12. Well, I guess we'll see. So, let's add our next six inch piece. And then let's update our calendar collector recording sheet. Okay, so I actually think that earlier I said we were day 12 of number corner, but I realized that I made a mistake. It's actually day 13 of number corner. Okay, so now we, we did add our 13th six inch piece, but we do need to um, update it here. So let's do so. So 13. So how many inches is that? Okay, we could say 12 times 6 plus 1 times 6. 72 plus 6 is 78. Or we could just add 6 to 72, which is essentially what we did when we distributed 13 into 12 plus 1. Okay, so how many feet is that? We just finished our 6 foot yesterday, so today we're adding, right, another half of a foot because every day we're adding a half of a foot because 6 inches is one half of a foot. So that'll be 6 and a half. Well, what if I just wanted to write it in halves? Do you remember what pattern it is we saw? Yeah, so every day it has that same number as a numerator. So we have 13 halves. Well, what about yards? What are our yards looking like today? Great. Now we have two full yards and another sixth of a yard. You got it. But can we write that as just a fraction? How many sixth pieces do we have? Here's a hint. Today is day 13. Right. So we would have 13 sixths. Good job. Now, we're going to do another workbook page for our calendar grid. So I want you to get out your number corner workbook and open it up to page three. Okay, 
it should look like this. We've seen this before because it has the same type of key. Staff is one, heel bone is 10, scroll is 100, and the lotus flower, which is 1,000. Now it says we're writing some equations. Last time we worked through a problem, um, we used the additive method. And it looks like this time we're using both multiplication and addition. So they've done an example here. Three heel bones, top three heel bones underneath, which is six heel bones total. And each one's worth 10, so six times 10 is 60. Or you could write it as 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10, which is 60. Or like I said earlier, three on top, that's 30. Three on bo bottom, that's also 30. So 30 plus 30 equals 60. Let's try the first one together. Okay, so how many heel bones do we have? Three, six, nine, right. And each heel bone's worth 10, so that will be nine times 10. Now remember, they're asking for an equation, not an expression, so we have to have an equal sign, and we should have an answer. That's easy, nine times 10 is 90, good. So that's our first answer. Well, let's do the second one. That should be easy also, because how many tens do we have? Nine tens, so we would just add 10 nine times. So make sure we have nine of them. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Good, and that still equals 90. Perfect, let's make it a little smaller so it can fit in our space here. And then the last one, remember how they did it earlier where they added each row? So let's do that. How much is on the first row? 30, 30, 30. So that would be 30 plus 30 plus 30, which still equals 90. So I want you to take a moment and work through um, the rest of the problems independently. I know you can do it. We've done this so many times before. I'm confident that you can do it quickly and accurately. All right, pause this video. All right, hopefully you've had some time to finish. Let's just quickly go through the answers. So number two, we have eight scrolls, and each scroll is worth what? Right, 100. So 100 times 8 or 8 times 100. The order doesn't matter when you're multiplying because the product is still going to remain the same. Okay, well, that means we should add 108 times. Or we can add them by rows. So that would look like, let me just make this a little smaller so you guys can really see. That would look like 400 plus 400. Did you get that? Great. Let's go on to the next one, number three. Well, we have five lotus flowers, and each one is worth 1,000. Okay, so five times 1,000, great. Now, after we do our thousand, five times 1,000, we can add 1,000 five times. This one was a little tricky because the other ones we added each row. There's only one row, so we could either have left it blank, or we could do this. 5,000 plus zero is still gonna be 5,000 5, because we only have one row. So if you did this, that's fine as well. All right, let's look at the last one. I'm gonna make this smaller again so we can move it out of the way. Number four, we have 15 heel bones and each heel bone is worth 10. So we have 15 times 10, which is 150. And then we could add 10 15 times, which would give us still 150, or we can add together each of the rows, which would be 50 plus 50 plus 50, and that's still 150. So did you get them all right? Great, if you made a mistake, that's okay. Just correct it, because sometimes when we make a mistake and then correct it, our brain learns the information even better. So good job. Okay, so now guess what? We have a little bit of time to go over our splat game because today 
Remember the other day I asked if you had time to play with a partner or a guardian or a parent or a sibling. Today I'm going to ask that again. So if you didn't do it the other day, then make, make sure you make time to do it today. And before we do it, I want to remind you of some things. Here's our splat grid. Each one represents, or each um, linear piece represents 10, okay? And so that means the smallest square on the grid represents 100 square units. And that's shown here. We talked about how many square units are in the whole entire grid. We talked about some examples where we made the size of this rectangle or the square a little bit smaller. And then we played a game together. So before I ask you to play with a partner, tell me, what are the rules of splat? Great, a player takes a spin. They multiply the two numbers. But what about that egg? What does that mean? Okay, so if you get one egg, that's a zero. And you see, last time we played, Ms. Trammell got a zero, and so that was zero for that turn. But what if you get two eggs? Right, it's actually zero for the whole round. Now, when we played, we didn't play a full round, just for the sake of time, but when you guys play, I want you to actually play both rounds, which means you'll have a total of eight turns. So then, how do you figure out who wins? Great, you have a total. You total each round, and then you have a grand total. And the person with the biggest number wins. If you wanna change it up a little bit, you can also play where the person with the smallest number wins. So just to remind you, let's do one turn together. So we're not playing against each other, it's just me reminding you how to play. And I'm actually going to go to a new game board. So I spin once. I get an egg. What does that mean? Zero. I think we know that. So let's try again, just because I want to make sure you know how to play. Spin 20 and 40. So my equation is 20 times 40 which we know from other work we've done in problem strings from the last time we played splat, we could break it down into two times 10 times four times 10. And then we can move around our numbers so that we can associate them together and really think through what the product would be. So I'm gonna put two times four together and I'm gonna put 10 times 10 together, which would give me eight times 100, which is how much? 800. You got it. So that would be my first turn. Now you guys have these playing sh um, sheets in your number corner journal. So you may do your work here where it says my work. That way where you, um, when you record your actual product, you have enough space to write the product. I also want to make sure you record your work because your partner should check behind you to make sure that you did it correctly. We don't want anybody cheating, and we definitely don't want to just pretend like we know how to play because the whole point is to practice our facts so that we can become more efficient mathematicians, right? Okay, so before you play, I just wonder, if you don't spin any splats, that's what we call the egg, which is why the game is called splat, then what is the lowest and highest possible score you can get in one turn. So for the lowest you may think of, or you may think about, what are the lowest numbers on each of those spinners? For the highest, you may think, what are the highest numbers on each of those spinners? Right, so for the lowest it would be 20, because that's the lowest here, or would it be 20? Oh, it would. You're right, because Ms. Trammell did say if you didn't spin any splats. So 20 is the lowest here, and 40 is the lowest there. So what is 20 times 40? We just did it. It was 800. That's the lowest possible score you can get if you don't spin any splats. So then what about the highest 
number you can possibly get. Right, 60 times 80. Well, what is 60 times 80? Great, six times 10 times eight times 10, which is six times eight times 10 times 10, 48 times 100 is, you got it, 4,800. So take some time today, play this game, even if you have to play against yourself. Challenge yourself to practice playing so that you're in turn practicing multiplication so you can become a better, more efficient mathematician. Thanks for joining me today. That's all for our number corner. We've updated our calendar grid. We did a calendar grid worksheet. We updated our calendar collector. And remember, today is day 13 of number corner. And then we reviewed splat and even did one spin together just to remind you how you could solve a problem. So have fun with the game, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.